What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Engineers Off Filters podcast, episode 163. I'm your host, Jacob Thompson, and tonight I'm drinking a new beer for me, Half Acre Tome Hazy Pale Ale. Got a nice little, my light's kind of making it look bad, but it's kind of a nice little like Western Vista cool. on there. Um, excited to try it out. Uh, I'm Joseph, and tonight I am drinking, uh, I bought it purely uh well, because it's the Lord of the Rings. Ah. It's uh, the Fellowship IPA. It is also a hazy IPA, so that helps its case. Um, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. It, it's Lord of the Rings. I can't say no. It's mid. <laughs> I, They're I relying on the ago. branding. It's, it's mid. It's fine. <laughs> That's a weird brand deal to get. Yeah. So. But, you know, if, if you can license it the Lord of the works. Rings, I, you works. know, put it on anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> The Apex Legend beer is next. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm Gabe. Uh, I have at, I've had this beer on the podcast many times. It's the Indeed Brewing Company's Flavor Wave IPA. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Nineties oh, yeah. art. Can't go wrong with it. Um, yeah, just solid, solid IPA. It's a good one. Yeah, and uh, you know I'm Dayton, and I'm drinking something that is so unique to this to this podcast. You guys have never seen this before. It's a truly blueberry. (laughs) (laughs) There it is. I'm like, it's either going to be soju or it's going to be, yeah, some standard ass shit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Dayton, are you back on the, on the seltzy train? Um, I don't know. I mean, like I've always liked seltzers, right? But (laughs) that's true. That's true. I feel like we were all on the seltzy train really hard and we all kind of fell off. I think one at a time. I've never fallen off. For me, it's always been a summer (laughs) thing though. Like, I think I started really hard in like May and then ended mm-hmm. by like end of September. It's just, yeah. I don't know. That's a good summer I, drink. I haven't had a seltzer in a hot minute, but maybe, yeah, maybe next summer I'll, I'll get back into it. Get some of that good, good press, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like I haven't found many new good seltzers recently. Yeah. Well, like, truly changed. Truly has real fruit juice in it now. Oh. I feel like those. the market's got to be so saturated at this it point. Is, it like, is very saturated. I mean, there was <laughs> like, that period, though, where we were all, like, actively looking and, like, finding new seltzers, like, all the time. You yeah, know? and that's – it was fun because it's mm-hmm. like, oh, here's a new one to try. And it's like, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. But it felt like they're all like, yeah, it's it's good or it's <laughs> bad. You know, I don't yeah. know. And, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't know. I like trying new beers, new drinks. And so mm-hmm. it's like, nah, I'm not finding as many new ones, so – you gotta know. go on the hunt. Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, this is a new year, a new season, some might call it, of Andrews Up Filters. We're back. We're going to be doing a more regular schedule now. Last year, we were doing monthly for a lot, but we're going to mostly every other week for a, a podcast episode, and then the off weeks will be gaming on our Twitch channel. Uh, that's EWF underscore podcast on Twitch. But to start things off, we're doing what we always do, which is the year compass, looking back on last year and looking forward to next year. So... This week, we're looking at 2022. Next week, we'll have another episode of 2023, and then we'll get into alternating weeks. So I'm excited to get into all that. But before, we got to do a quick recap, because I haven't talked to you guys in a while. I saw Joseph recently. But Gabe, who, who, I don't know what's going on with you. I haven't seen you in forever, you know? So <laughs> we, we got to do a little recap. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the last time we talked was, what, end of November, probably? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Something like that. So I spent a long time in Michigan. Um mm. There, for those who somehow weren't in the the wrath of the blizzard, there was um, a pretty big blizzard just before um, Christmas. So I went home a little early and I ended up staying a little bit later um, just to kind of avoid all the chaos that ensued. It really wasn't as bad as everyone said it was going to be. Um, I think it's worse now and it was way less models. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I spent half of my month um, okay. in Michigan, which was definitely weird being off my my routine and my schedule. Um, definitely glad to be back in my normal, reg- regularly scheduled program. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
but yeah, I, I guess like the only exciting thing is really that I've done, um, is I've started to snowboard season starting back up. So got to go a couple of times with some friends, um, and, uh, new year's, which I went, spent with Joseph. Uh, we were just kind of talking about, uh, how that went <laughs> more, more, of, more of the day after, um, I, I had a fantastic, uh, new year's. It was the first yeah. year in what? Two years that I feel like uh, we were able to go to bars because last year there was like one of the COVID variants that was starting to come back up. Well, yeah, we were going to go to that concert. We we're going to go to the Shackletons and then canceled, they got, right? yeah, the band got COVID. Mm-hmm. So we're like, well, what are we going to do now? And it was like, yeah, it was like super sketchy. Um, yeah, yeah. Variants. I think it might have been the Omicron. I don't know. It's all a blur. But like, it's been <laughs> two years of COVID basically. Um, so this is like the first year uh, we got to go to some dive bars and I got the most drunk i've been since like three four years new years ago um <laughs> it was a really good time uh it was fun so yeah nothing crazy all right well glad to hear it uh joseph how you doing i'm doing pretty well um let's see i had a birthday last month that was pretty cool i am continuing my saga of wanting up dayton and i got <laughs> the garmin phoenix 7 um <laughs> Which is a year better than Dayton's uh, lame ass <laughs> Carmen Phoenix Six Pro. They don't do the Pro model anymore, otherwise I would have gotten that one. But <laughs> oh my gosh, it's basically the same thing, but it has a touch screen and some different map things. It's got like a bunch of ski hills and stuff. So, and I got a pro deal on it, which was sick. So, um, yeah, I spent Christmas with Alyssa's family, which was fun. It was interesting um, spending Christmas with a different family because I've never really done that before. Um, The main difference that I noticed right off the bat was that there were a lot more middle fingers being thrown around at her (laughs) family's uh, Christmas than mine. As you guys know, my family, that would not fly around Crazy Cap. I thought Crazy Cap would be the one doing it the most, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, It's part of her namesake. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was fun. It was a good time. Um, there was a lack of communication between my parents and her parents, and uh, we have two new sets of pots and pans now. <laughs> um, so we got to decide whose parents are better um, and return the others, uh, which we're we're going through right now. But uh, no, it, it was a good good again yeah like gabe said starting snowboarding went a couple times on my new board which was awesome i'm going to uh troll hogging tomorrow night after work oh yeah uh which for people who don't know is a ski hill about an hour away that is open until 3 a.m on weeknights or weekends oh. and it's only 25 24 dollars um for 9 p.m to 3 a.m that's sick and as fuck I've heard that the beer there is better and cheaper than the hill, but (laughs) the night skiing, yeah, it's cheap. That's what I've heard too. So yeah, yeah, it'll it'll be a fun time. Um, And oh, so we'll just go right after work. I'm going with a coworker and uh, some other friends. So we've got a a decent sized crew, I think like five or six people. So it'll be a fun time. Um, And yeah, that's that's been the, the big stuff. Oh yeah. Dayton? your turn uh yeah um when i don't did i have my car have a new car yet yeah did i did i already talk about that i can't remember i think i, I think, think so. you were just about to get your new car right? i think okay. you knew what you were gonna it. get but you didn't like pull the trigger yeah because yeah. we Last went week. before or we recorded before thanksgiving and oh you okay and i went to the yeah studio. yeah so i won't i won't give like the whole story because it's still really fucking long but yes i do have a new car now um Yay. Yep, got a Subaru Crosstrek, so it's pretty cool. Still very weird to me to actually like have like a like a new nice thing. Um, <laughs> it's not know, really it's, your brand, is it? No, no. <laughs> mine is usually you know buy it when it's halfway into the ground. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, and then other than that, I don't know. Pretty low key, hanging out with friends around here. Is able to see my family around Christmas. Um, yeah, the blizzard wasn't too bad. I mean, I went out on trail runs both days during it um of course and yeah i mean went skiing or cross-country skiing not downhill skiing uh yeah and pokemon played a lot of pokemon 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You sent me so many Pokemon related TikToks. <laughs> Dude, they're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm not saying they're not I, I definitely appreciate them but i can tell you're in like a pokemon phase right now <laughs> yeah yeah i won't deny it which is i mean <laughs> he was life. telling me before the podcast though he's saying that he's fallen off of pokemon go so you know fake fan he's, he's actually playing a mainline game and trying to complete the pokedex that's what he's telling yeah me today. yeah i, mean, I am true i am close both. i am close to um getting all 400 in the 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 paldi index I think I'm at. Do you have to just do like wonder trades or whatever to get the last ones? Um, no, they have like specific like rooms to get the last one. So awesome. You can just like join these like link trades, knock them out. But I'm at like three twenty out of like four hundred, I think. Oh yeah, I can dig it. Uh, for me, so I went back to Minnesota for winter break. Um, had a really good time. Um, saw my family, saw a bunch of friends, uh, stayed with Joseph Melissa for a bit, uh, saw my buddy Perk, um, ate so much food and drank more beer than I've drank in like the last three months, which is not saying a lot for me because I barely <laughs> drink, but like I was stuffed. Um, and I, I think I had more diversity of food than I've ever had before in that short period of time. Cause I had Argentinian food, Korean food, Thai food, Middle Eastern food, and like two different kinds of pizza. Um, we had Vietnamese. Oh, Vietnamese. Yeah, sorry, I meant that instead of Thai. Uh, yeah, Vietnamese food. Um, so yeah, it was just a great time. Just a lot of eating, a lot of drinking, a lot of a lot of seeing friends. So, um, yeah, it's why I'm one of my favorite like trips home that I've had, or just away from here that I've had in a long time. So um, that was really great. And then, um, yeah, I just drove home on New Year's and actually had a good drive back for once <laughs> every time i've driven to minnesota from indiana or back there's been some issue but i got back only like eight hours so uh that was good there was a weird thing with my car but we got fixed it weird out my heat shield on my bottom of my car like was falling off but ah, was i yes. right is that what it yeah, was it was a heat shield yeah yes <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. but um one story quick i wanted to tell that happened today because i think you was gonna kick about is uh i ordered myself a new hard drive for christmas i got an M m.2 drive which for those who don't know is kind of just like a a stick that you just kind of plug into your motherboard um and i was like really excited because i'm like i need more storage i'll just get one of these my motherboard can support it so i'm like great order on amazon and uh it came today and i was like oh here we go opened it up and i opened the instruction manuals to make sure i wasn't like missing anything and it's like um <laughs> there are two kinds of m2 drivers there's like the sata ones which have like a one small bit and then a longer middle bit and then a small bit on the right and then the nvme which is like long and then short and i it, i'm like look i'm like wait can my motherboard take nvme or can it only do sata it's like <laughs> look up my the website for my motherboard i'm looking the at same it and, motherboard right yeah and i'm it's like the nvme one it's well i'm like well well, I'm looking at it, I was getting really, really confused because there's so many fucking acronyms. It's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I can take SATA or PCIe. I'm like, oh, well, I got NVMe. But then, <laughs> like, I literally almost, like, initiated the return on Amazon because I thought it wasn't going to fit. But then I was like, Did more okay, okay, NVMe and PCIe are the same thing. And I think this is right. Okay, this should work. I'll just open the bet my, my PC up and we'll, we'll take a look because obviously I'll be able to tell once I open it. So yada, yada, yada. And I don't know about you guys. I love my PC. I love that I built it. But every time I open it up, I get anxiety. Cause I'm like, I'm going to break something. <laughs> uh, you know, something's going to go wrong. Um, but I opened it up. And I look in there. I'm like, okay, see the slot. It's not as easy to access as I had hoped. It's like right above my graphics card, you know? Uh, so I'm like, I got to like wiggle down into there. And I look. And I'm like, okay, it does look like it will fit the drive. Like it's long and then short. So I'm like, okay, great. But then I'm going to like try to push it in. And it's just like not going in. And I'm like, what the fuck? And so I like have my phone flashlight and I'm trying to like get an angle on it. I know it. exactly what you did wrong. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm, I'm looking and it's just not going in. And then I looked at the thing and like it looks like the it looked like there might have been like another partition inside like the slot that was like blocking it. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. But I think it just got like kind of bent. Like it was just kind of bent down and I eventually pushed it enough and it got in there. Um, so I was able to push it in. Like, okay, thank God. Like, okay, now I deal with this goddamn screw because it's the tiniest screw that's ever been manufactured in the history of screws, right? And so I, I like unscrew it. I use some tweezers to pull it out. I'm like, all right, and then whatever. Finally, get the, the drive in. 
I'm like, all right, time to, <laughs> time to put the screw in. And I stupidly put the, the screws on my tweezers and I like, clay, I pushed a little bit too hard. It flew off the tweezers into my case, my PC case. And I'm like, oh, bro, I, God fucking damn it. I've never seen the screw again, but I was able to kind of tilt it, get it to a corner and then pull it out. Finally, I had to like tape the screw to my screwdriver to like hold it on there to get it in. Whatever. We did it. It worked. <laughs> my PC has a new hard drive now, but it was just like, at first I thought I had the wrong drive and then I almost lost it. It was just a whole, a whole thing. But <laughs> no, no bueno. No bueno. Gabe, yeah, what did you, what did you think I messed up? You're supposed to put it in at an angle and then fold it down. So I'm wondering if you I was trying, like... I was trying every angle, man, but it was literally, I think the plastic, like, <laughs> Yeah, it was supposed to be straight, oh, okay. and it got like a little bit like this. Okay. So I had again because once I pushed it all the way, then it stuck up. Then it was just like, See, yeah. An I thought you were just like trying to force it straight on. You had to do like a forty-five angle, like yeah. kind of rest it and then fold it down. I mean, I had to end up forcing it in. I mean, but after if it it's in, showing it up, like I wouldn't. No one yeah, it, <laughs> it but... looks good. I got it formatted. <laughs> I, I already put stuff on it. You know, it, it's working. All right, it does it's sound like you <laughs> brute forced it a little bit. <laughs> hey. What do you want from me? All right, it was that, or I gotta remove my entire graphics card, and I didn't want to do that. So I'm just it's like, we're just, <laughs> that's we're what just, I did. We're just pushing it in, man. I'm too lazy to undo, <laughs> undo all this other stuff. Oh my god. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know what? Let's let's get into the the topic here. We're we're doing our year compass, and we're looking back on 2022. Um, so if you're following along at home and you want to do this as well, you can go to yearcompass.com. You can download the PDF, and you can just fill it out digitally, or you can print it out. But um, we'll just be covering the first half of it today, looking back on the previous year. Excuse me. And we are going to start on page five. Uh, so this is this is what my last year was about. Uh, if you're a fan of the podcast, you know this very well. There's eight categories, and we'll just go around a few times and, and talk about what we want to talk about. Let's do three rotations. And uh, we'll just go in a circle. So I'm going to go down to Dayton. You can start us off. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say... Friends and community first. Um, I'm not going to do the cop-out one of relaxation, hobbies, and creativity like everybody else always does. Oh, oh you know I'm do doing it. third round. You'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I probably will. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, obviously, like, I moved from Connecticut back to Michigan. Um, so mm -hmm. leaving, like, my, my whole friend group back in Connecticut was, was um, obviously something really big in that category. Um, you know, in kind of like a negative way, right? Like I was sad to have left everybody there. Yeah. Um, but on the plus side, I've already made like a really close group of friends out here. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of like the same interests. So like we're all you know, like playing sports together and we go on like hikes together and it's really awesome. Um, and the community aspect, I I just connect a lot more with living, you know, here in, in Whitehall than I do with, mm. when I was in Groton. Like in Groton, you just kind of felt dead. I didn't have any connection with the community. Um, but here, it's I feel very much so like, I don't know, like injected into the community mm -hmm. and I'm actually like a part of it. Nice. Do you think it also helps you're just closer to family in general? Um, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like it is, I mean, the friends aspect, no, that, that made no difference. The community though, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just that like, I'm more familiar with West Michigan, and I know like what people are like, sure, um, sure, sure. around here. But you can start pointing on your hand for your, your yeah, hand. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or or what I or what I say like, oh yeah, I'm from Holland. Like people actually like know like what I mean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I still get made fun of every time I put the hand up. <laughs> I still do it. <laughs> hey, it's, it's handy. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, what do you want to talk about first? Um, I think I'll do a better tomorrow asterisk. Mm. It's got the asterisk there. I'm going to read it. All right. Mm. Uh, so I noticed this year in particular uh, that I started supporting local businesses more often. Mm. I think partly because of where I live now. Uh, this apartment is a lot closer to like, not like a downtown area, but like a more business di district um so there's like some good there's a really nice um middle eastern gro grocery store pretty close and like a lot of good restaurants like in the walking distance and so it's it's been nice to support those and some other businesses uh in the area i don't know it feels nice um 
And then I've shifted thinking, uh, my thinking on cars and car culture, and it's really changed how I view driving and lessened my impact uh, mm -hmm. on driving. And try I'm really trying to push uh, more walkable cities and, and things like that. I think that's, I've noticed a difference uh, in yeah. myself, and I, I hope I can help push that uh, to help more people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the good food I ate was in your neighborhood because there's a lot of freaking good food right by you, man. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go. Yeah, I'll do a career slash studies because um, I totally didn't expect to to switch jobs, but I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was one of those things where I just kind of like threw an app and uh, it kind of took hold. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm in a comp I mean, I'm still new to it, so there's still a lot of, um, I don't know what the word is, um, a, a learning curve. I'll just leave it at that. Mm. Um, but overall, I mean, I, it did on paper. I mean, I, I got um, basically a promotion in, in title. I got senior attached to my title, which is pretty sick. Oh, yeah. uh, I have a lot better perks, um, benefits. Um, I'm not commuting 35 minutes each way each day. Uh, I either bike when it's nice out or I take a bus or like work from home. Uh, so yeah, I'm really ex excited and happy that I have that flexibility now. Um, I feel a lot closer um, to Minneapolis and as a whole. Um, yeah, and I think uh, it definitely sucked leaving behind um, some of the people from my old job because I got along with them super well, but uh, you know, it's nice to, I still try and keep in contact with, that, with them as much as I can and hang out with them. But uh, yeah, I think overall it was a good move. It was an ex unexpected move, but I'm glad that I did take it. Um, and then there's also potential, if I have, feel like it, to continue my education at a very heavy discount at this place. Mm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it's, nice it's, 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 it's a lot of work, <laughs> but it is a lot less money. <laughs> yes. <so. laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah, we'll see. Nice. Uh, I'm going to start with physical health and fitness. Uh, it's kind of a weird year for me. This is the year that I've had to deal with the most just like physical stuff. Um, nothing too crazy, but just persistent stuff like uh, this year, my ass reflux was pretty bad and I got had to get a camera shoved down my throat and all that fun stuff. Um, in a pretty good place now, like I haven't been on meds consistently for a while. And when I was in Minneapolis, like I was totally fine, uh, which was encouraging when I was like trying much different food and stuff and it was fine. But <laughs> I had a theory that my ass reflux was stress related. And the fact that it came back literally as soon as I got home in Indiana, I'm like, yeah, I think this might be stress related. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> so, you know, once I, once I finish up here, I think it'll, it'll improve um, a lot more, but um, yeah, that was just something that was kind of on my mind a lot this year. And even though it wasn't like life threatening or super painful, just that persistence, like pain can be kind of, you know, hard in the mental health um, along with that. And more of like a comedy take on it is my stupid big toe being messed up for like all year uh because i'm pretty sure it happened last last year when i was visiting um minneapolis we went ice skating i think is when it got like messed up um but basically my left big toe like some trauma was done to it and for like a ton of months the toenail didn't grow it never died and broke off but um it just didn't grow for a while and then now it's it's almost back to normal but when it was growing back it was double thick um uh, for a, you know Eked one up. length of <laughs> picked up and then like i don't know yeah have you guys heard about like if you lose your pinky toe you like are, you're off balance uh I've never you know that in my life. I, supposedly it like messed you up i don't know if it's a similar thing but like i wonder if like, the small bit of extra weight on my toe from like the double thickness is causing me to be a little bit off because i keep stubbing it over and over and over again like this toe just keeps getting fucked up <laughs> and it's like always hurting i keep just running it into shit um so i don't know if it'll ever be back to normal fully but it, yeah the, the nail's almost there and it's like more of a funny thing but it's just this whole year i've been thinking about well how's my toe doing uh it's still kind of weird looking but um but then fitness wise i was able to kind of finally get into some sort of a running routine at the end of the year like i've been pretty consistently going three times a week um just going for like two three miles um which isn't, you know, probably as much as I should be doing, but it's definitely better than it was, and I'm happy that I'm being a little bit more consistent with that. So, uh, yeah. Back to you, Dayton. 
All right, I'm also going to go with the physical health and fitness. Um, wow, copier. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's the that's the, the dread of having to go first, right? <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, so I completed my first 50 miler uh, this year. That was obviously oh, yeah. a huge thing. I uh, spent a lot of time training for that. Uh, did the crusher. That was pretty cool. Um, that wasn't anything like new for me, but it's still you know a really fun event to do. Mm-hmm. Um, hiked the Vermont section of the Appalachian Trail, which mm-hmm. was I would say like more of a mental challenge, like I've talked about before, than physical one. Um, but it's still you know I would say like a physical thing overall to be doing hiking for a significant portion of the day, day after day. Um, and then recently I've started lifting again, uh, so I'm lifting and running, and then starting back up with the whole cross country skiing thing and hopefully cycling i did a little bit of cycling towards the end of the year so very cool oh. nice joseph um i'll do personal life and family um starting off <clears throat> with my newest nephew um making me the only one of my mother's kids that doesn't also have kids <laughs> um so that's pretty sick and exciting. You um, sound stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, it's it's the best because there is no stress on me. There's enough kids already. That's right. There's what do you there say? Eight, eight or nine. There's eight. Yeah, eight. Um, my newest nephew. His name is Henry. So they've been calling him Henry the Eighth. Um, mm. we'll, we'll, we'll that's a white people should have ever heard it. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> it, it makes me sick. But you know, it's cute, whatever. Um. Moving in with Alyssa, that was a pretty big event, and it's mm-hmm. been going pretty well so far, knock on wood. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've also been able to make more family trips this year. Um, I went on that uh, vacation in April, I think, um, and then being home like three or four times since then. Um, it's been it's, it's been really nice is being able to make the time to be home and see them. Go. Yeah, which I'm trying to find one that we haven't done, but if we're going to do it three times, I feel like we're going to run into it. <laughs> some duplicates, anyway. There's uh, habits. Did you have any habits that defined you? Uh, they kind of suck. Mental health. Uh, I'll, I'll, I could do habits, though, I guess. Um, yeah, so I have, uh, at this point, I've been going to the gym consistently for four years. Uh, that's something that I've almost, wow. I think I've only missed I don't know, probably less than 10 times in those four years, hitting less than three times a week. So I'm really proud of that. Um, I've been reading more books uh, before Mm. bed. Uh, I finished 13 books this last year um, compared to one that I did in 2021. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, a huge improvement, and I've really been enjoying it. Uh, It's something I liked a lot as a kid, um, Mm -hmm. but it's definitely something that's a lot easier to move to the wayside when you have – you don't have a time limit on your video games and TV, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, what's what's your uh, <laughs> fiction-nonfiction ratio? So I really like nonfiction, but I definitely read it slower. Um, so mm. I usually do um, two nonfictional every fiction, but I'll mm. absolutely burn through the fiction books. Like just yeah. over Christmas break, I finished The Hobbit for the first time, mind mm. you. I fucking blew through that book. <laughs> um, but the, the book before that was... Um, I think it was called Finding Flow. Uh, I think that's the last one I read, and that took just like much longer. But it's it's more like I don't know applicable to your life than fighting a a dragon. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Regardless, it, it, I've enjoyed it in both fronts. So I'd say it's about one to one or two to one. Um, and then the last habit I have, um, especially in the latter half of the year, uh, been making more of an effort to cycle uh to a place instead of bike to or to drive to it um especially like it's kind of like a first uh reaction now that you know i'm closer to a lot of other stuff it's like oh i'll just take the bike instead of drive um and it's been fun so awesome uh i was thinking about doing relaxation now but i'll save it for for round three I'm sure we'll, we'll do it. If you're gonna do it for round three, just do it now. <laughs> nah, nah, I'll save it. I'll save it. Um, I want to do reveal. 
I want to do friends and community um, because I think this year, this is probably the year that I feel like my friends have been the most crucial uh, to to my just life. Um, so got to give a major shout out to Anna and Lissa, my two really good friends here uh, here at grad school. I love them so much, and they've been just like my my rock uh, going through um, this grad school here, and um, yeah, just love them to death. So they've been they've been massive. Um, I got to reconnect with one of my friends from high school, uh, my buddy Javid, um, at uh, my friend Chris's wedding. And that's been really fun. We've been talking about streaming together and like video games and stuff. And it's just been really fun to hang out with him more and, and help him out with some stuff when he needs it. Um, did a full year doing the Red String Week podcast with Perkins. Um, that was awesome. And just getting to talk to him more than I have in uh, you know a few years. And just, yeah, I love talking about movies with him. And it's just been really nice to interact with him more frequently um my friend chris i mentioned um for for his job he has to drive a lot so he calls me multiple times a week whenever he's driving just at random times and we'll chat you know for 15 minutes like two hours sometimes and it's just been nice hearing from him more and again just like haven't talked to him and javid and perk that much since high school so it's just it's cool to have them back in my life in a big way um and then yeah like obviously i didn't get to talk to you guys as much this year because we were going more monthly on the podcast but i'm hoping that next year we can get back in our cadence and i can talk to you oh gabe shakes his head no. he doesn't want it <laughs> uh, but yeah no i just yeah i really wait love till i talk about my mental massive. health in comparison how much i've been talking to you <laughs> <laughs> just Brutal. skyrocketing up <laughs> i'm sorry continue no that was that was it yeah just yeah very very thankful for my friends which will come up a lot i think in this uh this episode but dayton Final pick, are you going to do it? Are you going to do relaxation and hobbies? No, you know what? I'm not. He's bucking I'm, the trend. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I uh, kind of a toss-up between the two, but I'm just going to go with my gut. I'm going to do mental health and self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say... Uh, I'll read it all. All right. So realizing that I have some anxiety about not being productive about things. Um, mm -hmm. So like, I mean, you guys obviously know me. Like, I don't really sit still, like, ever. Um, mm -hmm. And just kind of, like, learning how to, like, work around it more. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the reason why I liked, why I like doing, like, the birthday projects for you guys. Because that's, like, a project for me to work on, but it's not super stressful. Um, but it still, like, gives me a reason to wake up on Saturday morning super early, which is like a routine <laughs> that I really enjoy doing. Um, and it, it just, it gives me like, you know, something to like focus on and like, I don't know, put my energy into. Um, so I think learning to incorporate in some like, I'll just say like projects or something like that, that aren't super stressful, that allow me to feel like productive when it, it's not a stressful stressful environment yeah oh yeah that's i'm glad that you're feeling better about it and that i don't know you feel like you maybe get a little more of a handle on it, maybe control it more if you, if you need we'll to. see i guess <laughs> no, it's, it's a hard one to buck yeah <laughs> yeah well you may, may even need to buck it i guess but yeah just being more aware of it is always mm -hmm. yeah. good yeah joseph Fine, I'll do it. All right. <laughs> Relaxation, hobbies, comma, creativity. So derivative. Mm -hmm. God. Get it out of the way. <laughs> uh, first of all, I don't know if you guys have heard, I did this little bike race uh, called the Crusher. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing the Crusher t-shirt right now, actually. <laughs> um, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of pain. And this is not going to be the only time you're going to hear about it this episode. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Every box is just crusher, crusher, crusher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so buckle up, kiddos. Um, I did more camping this year. It wasn't like as intensive as Isle Royal, but it was still a lot of fun. Um, and I started building a pack raft. Um, I got it's the true. kit. I saw the parts. I, yep. I, I got a uh, similar kit that Dayton got. Did he get one nicer? Well, <laughs> it's a little different. Um, it's blue instead of yellow. Mm. Um, 
Gotta I'd go say that's blueberry. better. Yeah. Lame, lame, dude. It's not a banana. It's and, not a floating uh, banana. It, 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 there's like some minor differences, but it's not that much different. Um, and I, I almost beat The Witcher Three this year. <laughs> <laughs> I, Did you write that down? Yeah, <laughs> because this is the closest I've come to completing a video game in years. It's noteworthy. It's noteworthy. I'll give it it is noteworthy to me, and I had a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it, and I'm happy that I'm not done. I'm still gonna like play it here and there when I can or think about it uh, but i'm glad i definitely put more effort into trying to complete it this year because i put it on the year compass and because of that i am proud of myself and uh glad that we do this so so that's why i wrote it down all right i'm proud of you thank you jacob <laughs> uh gub yeah i'll uh I'll go with mental health and self knowledge. Oh, also uh, bucking the trend. Also bucking the trend. Uh, I think this one is 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 and has been an absolute roller coaster for me in twenty twenty two. Just because um, I- I'm sure I'll mention it later, but like my life in general has just completely like changed very quickly. Like halfway through the year, with like moving into my own place and having a new job, it just like completely threw me into an entirely different environment, even though I stayed in the same city. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think like at the beginning of the year, um, you know, as I was starting to realize I was kind of at the end of my rope with my old job, uh, I had a lot of um, different feelings than I do now, but I do think I'm not going to list all of them, um, but I've had a lot more time um, to myself, whether that was like the break between jobs and just having my own space uh, to kind of reflect on who I am, like as a person, like what I want to do. And like, like, I don't know, just like a lot of I know it sounds like pseudo deep, but I feel like I've had a lot of time <laughs> to reflect on like, um, like, instead of just constantly having someone like Joseph or Tim to like walk down and like, let's watch some stupid TV show to like actually think about uh, like myself. Um, I feel like I've gained a lot of self-knowledge. Um, in conjunction with reading a lot of those like nonfiction books, I feel like there's been a lot of things that I've identified that I like about myself and other things that I want to like improve on. So, um, yeah, I think I'm really happy that I have that time and space now to, to realize a lot of these things. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I've said before, I'll say it again. Everyone should live by themselves at some point in their life. It's good for you. Um, all right, I will not book the trend, and I will do relaxation, hobbies, and creativity. And here's what I'm going to do. So in the previous page of this, um, it's called going through the calendar. You're supposed to, like, write down kind of big moments from your year. And I do that a little bit. But, like, I, I don't know, like, I got a lot going on. There's not a lot of moments in my life. So what I also like to do is I add in – I try to write down every single thing that I liked that I watched or listened to this year because uh, my hobbies are mainly, like, watching stuff um, and playing games. So – I have a absolutely massive list of stuff that I'm not going to go through the whole thing, so it'll take too long. But I am yeah, indulge me for a little bit here. I'm going to go through and just shout out a lot of great stuff because this 2022 great year for just media in general. Like until I was writing stuff down, like there was a lot of great shit that came out last year. But all right, here we go. On the movies, we got Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Northman, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, for Perk, I got to say Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, great movie. Uh, Bullet Train was super fun. Um, massive shout out to the Weird Al Yankovic biopic. That movie is fucking hilarious, and not enough people watched it. Um, and it's free to watch online, so check that out. And then also Glass Onion, uh, I watched with Joseph and Alyssa, which was a very fun time. Uh, trying That's to just like pick movie. out the mystery, great. Uh, for shows, uh, The Bear, incredible. Mm-hmm. Peacemaker, way better than it has any right to be. Actually, like a very deep message and really funny show. Andor, absolutely incredible. Like, how the fuck they pull that shit off, but it's, like, so fucking good. Um, Our Flag Means Death was really funny. On the game side, we had God of War Ragnarok. Super excited for that to come out, finally. Citizen Sleeper was a really good story game that I played. Elden Ring lived up to the hype. It's a great time. Uh, Marvel Snap, I got really addicted to for a hot minute there. I'm kind of falling off now, but uh, still really solid. And then I finally played some old games this year. I played Death Stranding for the first time, and I absolutely loved it. 
and I want Dayton to start playing it because he's gonna get addicted as hell. But I don't need I don't need that. It. I don't need that in my life right now. <laughs> when Jacob. the Pokemon <laughs> hype falls down, pick up Death Stranding. It's gonna be all good. right. That uh, he just wastes all his time on that. I can see him like trying to min max. Whatever. <laughs> he is going. He's is. definitely going to. I I <laughs> have been be EV. I have been EV training Pokemon for raids. <laughs> oh no! Nonstop. <laughs> Um, on anime side, uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners was incredible, and that ending absolutely fucked me up for like a week. Um, Mob Psycho 100 finally ended and was perfect. Ten out of ten show. Chainsaw Man finally came out and it was incredible. Um, absolutely loved it. Shout out to Bochi the Rock, which is a kind of slice life anime that I watched recently. That was very wholesome and and fun. Demon Slayer, uh, Ranking of Kings was great. Uh, Spy Family, great as always. I watched Odd Taxi, finally. Odd Taxi was incredible uh, mystery. Um, shout out to some YouTube channels. Corridor Crew, as always, great for doing movie analysis on CG and stunts. Brian David Gilbert, always makes me laugh. Um, Perk put me onto this guy called Summoning Salt, like just over break, who does speedrunning videos, or specifically the history of speedrunning. And some of, like, the coolest content I've watched recently. It's just kind of, like, mini documentaries about, like, a certain game and how speedrunning kind of evolved for that specific game. And the one, there's one about Punch-Out called The Quest to Beat Matt Turk. That's, like, one of my favorite YouTube videos of all time. Like, it is just absolutely incredible. I would recommend it to anybody, honestly. Um, and then also shouts to Daryl Talks Games, probably my favorite video essay channel. And then... Um, Sakurai, who is the director of all the Smash Bros. games, started a YouTube channel just on game design, and it's so just wholesome and fun. And uh, if you're interested in games at all, you gotta give a shout out to that. And then finally, uh, music side, some new bands that I discovered this year: uh, Bandmade, uh, Fuji Kaze, Low Roar, Itsuji Bun Gaku, Nishima, and Vondi. I all love a lot of Japanese bands in there, but I'm getting even more into Japanese music this year because. I'm a I'm a weeb. I'm an anime nerd. So, yeah, 2022, right. great job. I hope 2023 is as good, if not better, than than last year on media. All right, let's move on to page six. This is six sentences about my past year, and I think we just all just go through it, and you can skip any you want to skip, but we can just kind of just go through as many as you want to. So, um, I can start off here. So the first one is the wisest decision I made. Uh, for me, it's starting therapy up again. Um, very, oh, I, I was kind of on the fence about it because I wasn't sure I needed it, but um, decided to to go for it. And the therapist I have now is my the best therapist I've ever had. Um, he's absolutely fantastic and really pushes me to think about kind of how I behave and and what I kind of need as a person and um, just being a really good perspective on on things. So, shout out to Doctor Black. Uh, the biggest lesson I learned um, is that. It's my life, not anyone else's, which sounds very obvious, but <laughs> it's a lesson that I didn't really realize until now. Of like, it's my life. I should make decisions that I want to make that are for me, not that other people want to make for me or what they think is, is best. Um, so that's the one I'm still struggling with, but um, I'm glad I, I learned it. Um, biggest risk I took. Um, so a little bit of context for this one. Over winter break, I sat down and had kind of a, difficult conversation with my parents and was kind of trying to be honest with them and about our kind of relationship because things have been not super great for a while because I just haven't felt like I can be honest with them for a long time because we're pretty different people now. Um, and uh, it was a hard conversation to have, but I'm glad we did it. And I think that'll improve our relationship uh, going forward. So um, I was very anxious about it, but I'm, I'm glad I did that. Biggest surprise of the year was reconnecting with my friend David. I mentioned it earlier, but I've never expected to kind of talk to start talking to him again and, and become uh, good friends again. Um, most the most important thing I did for others uh, was I just tried to listen a lot to people and just listen to what they they needed and and just try to take a step back and not try to fix everything. Um, and then the biggest thing I completed was probably a full year of doing the Red String Movie podcast with Perk, um, just because. Wasn't always sure that we were going to like do it for a long time, but it's been going really well, and I'm glad that we uh, finished a year of it. So, um, yeah, those are mine. Dayton, I will go to you next. All right. Uh, I'm just going to rapid-fire these things. The wisest mm -hmm. decision I made, moving back to Michigan. 
The biggest yeah. lesson I learned. Small decisions can truly ripple in ways that I couldn't even imagine. Dude, that's my fucking... Se- oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Continue. I did mine before you. I can get into I your read game. your thoughts. It's not like you <laughs> sent me a copy. I'm first. I'm first. <laughs> All right. Uh, the biggest risk I took. Quitting my job without having anything lined up. Uh, the biggest surprise of the year. Discovering that I don't particularly enjoy through hiking. Uh, the most important <laughs> yeah. thing I did for others. Sure that I don't overschedule so that I can spend genuine high value time with friends and family. Uh, the biggest thing I completed. I uh, managed to complete everything I had planned on doing this summer, except for Isle Royal, but that was because of extenuating circumstances, a.k.a. COVID, which I still managed to shove even more stuff in after that because of COVID. So I, I think it's a win. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, Joseph. All right. Uh, the wisest decision I made was biking more, um, even if it was just my road bike around town for, to pick up Jimmy John's. Um, the biggest surprise a year of the year, um, ironically, completing the crusher with minimal training and not getting injured. Um, I, I was, I am surprised I didn't get hurt. <laughs> These sentences are so at odds with each other. <laughs> Ride my bike more. Minimal training. <laughs> I rode my bike more after the crusher. I think. <laughs> I never claimed to be a smart man. Um, The most important (laughs) thing I did for others uh, was to practice more patience. Mm. And uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. All right. Gub, close us out this one. Uh, Sure. Yeah. Uh, A lot of these are going to be repetitive. But why is this decision I made? I jumped ship from my old job before it got worse and I stagnated. Um, Biggest lesson I learned life can change a lot by just a few decisions <laughs> um, yeah that's fuck you Dayton <laughs> sorry <laughs> I guess <laughs> don't have the same epiphany as me man. <laughs> <laughs> biggest risk I took uh, yeah jumping jobs uh, surprise of the year random new job change like I said they're gonna do the same thing uh, most important thing I did for others uh, supporting um, old coworkers and friends when I can to help um, either help each other out uh, to improve our positions and and just you know be better friends and be better at listening to people. Um, the biggest thing I've completed I have a couple of things. Uh, I hit my mile goal on my bike. I did a thousand miles on my bike. Uh, I've read over twelve books a year, which I really want to do. I did thirteen, um, and then I also have the Crusher. So um, yeah, that was very solid. Uh, all right, let's go into the next page, which are six questions about my past year. Uh, same format. You can do as many or as few as you would like. Uh, and again, I'll start us off with what are you most proud of? Uh, this was a hard one for me, but I went with uh, the Red Sea Movie Podcast. I really like that show a lot, and it's been very fun. Uh, who are the three people that w- who influenced you the most? For me, it was my therapist and my friends, Lissa and Anna. Who are the people that you, you influenced the most? Uh, my buddy Javid, through helping him with his streaming and kind of content creation. And then again, Lissa and Anna. Um, were you not able to accomplish? Um, a lot of my kind of research stuff kind of went not great this year, so that was a little bit rough. Um, what is the best thing you've discovered about yourself? Uh, I have complete autonomy over my own life. And what are you most grateful for, uh, my friends? Dayton, back to you. Uh, what are you most proud of? Having the courage to have the difficult conversation about quitting my job. Mm-hmm. Uh, who are the three people who influenced you the most? Um, I put down four here. Um, so I put Cheater. Uh, I put my friend Justin, who I think you guys all know, um, just mm-hmm. to kind of get me more into uh, ultras and kind of you know convincing me that I can do them. Um, Chef, who is a, a friend of mine that I met on the uh, the long trail when I was doing that, mm-hmm. um, and she kind of helped convince me to keep on hiking. Um, and that was just kind of a very that was one of like those small like ripple things where I didn't expect it to really mean anything mm-hmm. in the time. Um, and then Carly, who is a friend of mine out here, um, and the reason why I specifically put her is because she was the one that I first talked to. Um, she was mm-hmm. bartending that night. 
and I she was like, "Oh yeah, go talk to my friends." And then ever since then, it's been you know awesome. Uh, and then Andrew, who's my previous boss, just because uh, this summer would have been a lot different um, without him being mm-hmm. open minded about uh, you know me quitting or what that transition. Um, who are the three people you influence the most? Uh, I didn't have one this year. I said I was pretty individualistic most of the year and transient in most people's lives um, just because I was moving around. Obviously, I moved back to Michigan, and then this summer I wasn't in one place for more than like like two at a time. Um, what were you not able to accomplish? Isle Royal. Uh, and I also wasn't able to get my motorcycle running as well as I wanted it to. Mm. Uh, best thing you have discovered about yourself, uh, that taking risks isn't really like that bad. Um, and oftentimes it leads to a lot of really beneficial situations. Uh, what are you most grateful for? That I was able to make my summer plan work and the move back to Michigan went well without a hit. Mm. Nice. Um, Joseph. So, what are you most proud of? Not quitting the crusher. Um, there's <laughs> a point. There was a point before we even made it to the first checkpoint um, where I was like, "I'm not going to finish this. I'll get as far as I can, but there's no way I'm not going to." Um, so I, I was really proud. I pushed through. Um, three people who influenced you the most. Um, probably my one would be my coworker Jeff. He uh, he's been tuning skis for like 20 some odd years so about as long as we've been alive Mm -hmm. so he's got a lot of knowledge on (laughs) skis and ski history and tuning ski and so and like even out west you know in the summers you tune bikes so he's been a wealth of knowledge and and teaching me a lot of a lot of really cool stuff um Alyssa obviously we we've been living together and been growing and learning a lot about um, ourselves and all that and then the youtube channel not just bikes uh they he is responsible for radicalizing me (laughs) Um, hands down Um, i was not able to accomplish completing the witcher which i mentioned and finishing fellowship of the ring uh i made a point to read the book and it just kind of slept slipped away from me um which whatever and most grateful for um, health, good friends, and a comfortable environment. Love it. Gub. Sure. Um, I'm going to do what? First one. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page. What are you most proud of? Um, I have having the means to live by myself comfortably. Um, what are the three people who influenced you most and the three people you influenced the most i am not going to answer i got a gaggle of people Mm. i really just want to use the word gaggle Um, (laughs) but (laughs) yeah just people in my life in general um but yeah you know who you are uh what were you not able to accomplish um i have getting into some more communities and more um connections that i was looking to make initially um, just some things kind of fell through, but that's just kind of how life is. Um, looking to do more next year. Um, not feeling comfortable in my new job just yet. Uh, hopefully, that will eventually will go away. Um, <laughs> but yeah, still kind of getting to it. Um, and then I did not do a century bike ride, which is what I wanted to do. Um, I didn't really think about it probably till like October, but it was definitely something <laughs> I wanted to do by the end of the year, um, and it just never ended up happening. Um, so yeah, uh, what's the best thing you've discovered about yourself? Um, how adaptable, uh, I am despite as much change that I've gone through. Um, and that's kind of ties into what am I most grateful for, um, uh, being able to handle as much change as I have and remaining somewhat intact. Uh, it may not be perfect, but I'm able to do it regardless. Um, and I've met plenty of new people and, um, friends in this last year, um, I'm very grateful that I've met and been able to do stuff with. So awesome. All right, let's uh, move on to page nine. Um, this might be, I don't know, depending on what you have, it might be a lot of repetition, so you can choose to re-say stuff or not. I don't know. 
But again, as much or as little as you want to talk about here. Um, for me, list your three greatest accomplishments. Um, I had continuing Red String podcast, helping out my buddy David with his streaming stuff, and uh, being honest with my parents for the first time in a while. What have you done to achieve these? Um, I just mainly wanted to focus on, like, or say, like, I try to focus on people a lot, like who they are, what they need, what they're good at, what they struggle with, um, and including my, myself in that, but just trying to focus on the people as a part of these things. And uh, who helped me? Uh, Kirk, David, and my therapist, respectively, um, just for believing in me and believing I was competent. And most of the time, I was. So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't always believe that about myself that I can do things, but everyone keeps saying I can do stuff. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll believe you. But, <laughs> um, and then I'll, yeah, I'll do the second one here. Uh, three biggest challenges uh, were grad school, um, family relationships, and physical health. Uh, what have I overcome these were therapy and friends. And then what have I learned about myself while overcoming these? Um, I've learned kind of the things that cause my depressive episodes and also things that can help get me out of them. Um, so that's been uh, very helpful and, and useful in trying to regulate kind of my emotions. So, uh, yeah, that's what I have. Um, yeah, three greatest achievements or accomplishments. A lot of recap here. Uh, moving back <laughs> to Michigan, completing my ultra, uh, and finding a new friend group here in Whitehall. Um, what have you done to achieve these? So these are just sequential, uh, right? So lots of financial planning and logistics for moving back. Mm. Um, planned that for like months. Uh, so many miles ran uh, and having the discipline <laughs> um, to stick to it for months, um, especially when I had a lot of setbacks like getting COVID and then I had to push it back even further. Um, and just having the discipline to keep going uh, even though a lot of challenges to actually getting out uh and then you know some dumb luck uh <laughs> you know going to a brewery by myself on a friday night with no plans <laughs> um then who helped you achieve these my mom and my dad helped me move uh, my good friend connor uh he was you know good moral support when i was moving out helped me move a little bit um he also did a lot of my training runs with me that was nice and then Harley, who I already mentioned, introduced me to everybody that I know here. There's most mm. that I know here. Um, three biggest challenges. Um, I'm going to say two. Uh, having the conversation that I was quitting my job uh, and mm. then running my body into the ground over the summer. Uh, <laughs> Do you know how many total miles you ran last year? I, it wasn't that many, honestly, because like during the summer, I didn't run that much. Mm. I mean, I could look it up. I would assume that it's a few hundred, like probably like six or seven hundred, maybe. Probably more than that. I don't know. Somewhere yeah, around it's there. Still solid. Nothing, nothing crazy. Um, and then uh, who or what helped you overcome these challenges? Uh, all of my friends and family that knew I was going to quit. It made me feel like I had to do it. It kind of like, <laughs> like accountability, like forced me into doing it because like. You know, I I felt that they were like depending upon me to actually mm -hmm. do it, um, and at least with the running my body into the ground over the summer, just the sheer fun and company through all of the physical challenges. Um, like I know that I did the the ultra alone, but like the crusher, obviously doing all like my backpacking trips and everything. that was company is always really important to me. Uh, and what have I learned about myself? Uh, physical challenges are far easier for myself um, and I can push through them much easier than mental challenges <laughs> um, and that I often get into thought loops with mental challenges and that it takes a lot of effort um, mm. you know help from friends to kind of like break out of it um, and then even then it still takes time yeah I relate to that I had a lot of times this year where I was like spiraling and I said like call somebody and like just get it out mm -hmm. and then that, that helps but yeah, I don't like getting those loops either. Joseph. All right. Um, three greatest accomplishments. Um, visiting more than three state parks or new state parks this year. Really proud I was able to do that. 
Um, and then this is going to come as a complete shock. Uh, I did the crusher. <laughs> wait, wait, what was that again? Wait. Yeah. So I wrote, I, what did I, you I, do? I wrote crush period, obviously. <laughs> um, uh, what have you done to achieve these? Uh, I convinced Alyssa that camping is fun. And so that helped us go to a lot of state parks. Um, and then moderate training and ignoring my body. Mm. Love um, that mm-hmm. for the for the crusher uh who helped me achieve these successes uh Alyssa and then Dayton Josh and Gabe um mm-hmm. on the actual race and Wait, leading up race? to it so <laughs> there's this white <laughs> race right um uh, and then biggest challenges um being unable to order my pack raft kit it's been out of stock <laughs> for so long and i couldn't get it until like november uh which was very frustrating for me because it's I've been wanting it because i'm impatient um crusher again <laughs> it's, i i knew it was a meme as i was writing it down every time sure sure <laughs> um and then getting used to living with my significant other Mm-hmm. Um, and then who or what helped you overcome these, uh, patience, perseverance, pain tolerance, Dayton, Josh, Gabe again, and Alyssa again, mm-hmm. uh, kind of revolving, uh, scenarios here. Um, and then what have you learned about yourself, um, that I should train more for next year? <laughs> um, maybe, a, maybe a little bit, maybe do one or two. Are you, are you planning on things. doing it again? Oh yeah. Next year? And so, okay. Yeah. Nice. There's. there's no way i'm not the group chat <laughs> has been rekindled yeah mm. it's uh it really never died but yeah no I <laughs> um and then and that i didn't need to be as nervous as i thought i did in regarding living with Alyssa, not not the mm. race i should have been more nervous for the race <laughs> um, yeah not yeah. that it hasn't yeah. been <laughs> and growth um uh, with us living together but mm-hmm. it has been manageable work and growth so mm-hmm. Gabe. All righty. Uh, three. This is going to be a recap, guys. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you, like I said, you can go like go fast or skip stuff. I'm going to go fast through the ones that we're recapping. Uh, got my own place. Got a new job. Um, hit my goals for reading and cycling. Uh, what have you done to achieve this? Uh, career-wise, got enough experience and confidence to move up positions um, and having the courage to leave. Uh, completed physical challenges through consistency um same thing with with reading um what who helped you achieve these uh coworkers were super helpful at my last job um helping me get my new job uh kind of talking me through it um physical challenge wise uh obviously everybody in the crusher uh your mood is much much better when you're riding with other people um, but also just having other friends in my life who are also very active um, really helps me feel like I need to keep up so I don't get left behind. Um, <laughs> and then I also put uh, myself uh, because I feel like I was uh, driven enough to achieve some of these things that I really didn't want to do, and I had a little bit more longer-term goals than I normally did this last year. Uh, three of my biggest challenges uh, I have adjusting to living alone, um, coming to terms with my career and where I live, um, and taking more stock in that and being more grateful of where I'm at and, mm-hmm. and where, where I be. Um, and then ironically, my last one uh, is confidence because uh, it's just been so up and down with, with job mm-hmm. and moving and stuff. So, um, yeah, quite a battle. Who or what has helped you overcome these? Uh, I think a lot of it, like uh, I kind of alluded to before in the mental health section, is um, just kind of coming to terms with certain things and being okay with um, certain situations and not being so harsh on myself. I have a tendency to be my worst critic by a thousand miles. Um, so being better about that has been a lot, um, a lot of help. And just all my friendships and being able to reach out to people uh, has been been great and then what have you learned about yourself uh yeah i mean i kind of said a lot of those things um don't be so harsh uh i enjoy a lot of company um and 
being able to have honest conversations with friends. Um, need to be a little bit more mindful about how I interact socially uh, now that I have my own place and I work from home primarily, or my co- new coworkers do. Mm. Um, and also taming my expectations on my life and not taking what social media prints mm. as what my life needs to be and actually being mm. grateful for what I have and being more conscious of all the good things that I do have and being appreciative of them instead of worrying about the the things I don't have. So, yeah, yeah, social media stuff is a big one. I it, always thought like I'm immune to this, like I'm smarter than this. But then after <laughs> cutting it out of my life, I'm like, oh man, that was fucking me up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even like some of the Instagram reels, it's like, man, why am I not doing that? It's like yeah. I don't know. It's just yeah such a toxic way to, to think so you can't I'm have never, it all folks yeah what? well i'm gonna probably talk about it on the, on the podcast but i'll mention it again like for like yeah or tiktok which i haven't been on in a hot minute but what was fucking me up that i didn't realize was i was getting a lot of videos of like a lot of women being like here are green flags for men here are red red flags for men men should do this men should do that and i was like I gotta do all these and like, i taking notes can't. yeah i was like yeah. taking notes i'm like <laughs> if i want to like get a girlfriend i gotta do all this and it's like I had to step back and be like, none of these girls know me, and I don't know any of them. Like, <laughs> some of the stuff might apply to me, some of it might might not. They don't they, they don't know me, so I I can't take their advice because it's just like not applicable to me specifically. They're just saying what they want to say because it's true for them, but it's not necessarily right. true for me. So, um, yeah, voices that you hear will just kind of it can affect you without you knowing. But let's close it out, boys. Page twelve. Uh. The past year in three words. What are the three words that defined last year? Uh, the ones I picked were frustrating, connections, and discovery. And I'm not going to say my book title because I think it's cringy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dave, what do you uh, have? Mine are challenging, growth, and comfort. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I... I thought a lot about my book title and I mean, I think it's decent, but I I do think it is cringy, but I, (laughs) I think that's part of the spirit of this. Um, so I put, I put, uh, eating the perfectly ripened fruits of labor. (laughs) I can see that in a Barnes and Noble on the shelf. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, it almost sounds a little communist to me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> the book cover's got here. a sickle. <laughs> um, my three words were hinted at earlier, and I wrote it down earlier. Crusher, like, crusher, crusher. <laughs> no, actually, no. And I was like, oh, I like that. That's good. It was patience, perseverance, and pain tolerance. I didn't notice the alliteration earlier. Uh, yeah. like, is he doing something there? And I was like, ah, that's kind of good. I like that. And I, yeah. I kept it. Um, nice. And then now you guys are right. My book title is Crusher 2022, You Poor Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been. Uh, what nothing about? beats rolling into the the campground. And that's the first sign you, we saw was you poor bastards. And I was like, oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> What about a crusher? I hardly I know her. That's, that's the group <laughs> chat. That's the secondary. Oh, tagline. okay. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, is it me? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's only. I'm sorry. There's only one word that I really want to share. Uh, the other stuff. The, my my book title is very cringy, and the other ones. Uh, <laughs> I feel like they're themselves. all going to be cringy. We're not mm. authors. <laughs> right? yeah. 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 I mean, the the one word I do have. Uh, is change slash turbulence which i guess is two words um yeah and then the book title is just like a run-on sentence Uh, (laughs) it's it's really more of like an intro or like a something you read in like the the pamphlet of the book where it like describes like what's happening and not the book title so Mm -hmm. i I don't know if we need to we need to share that so (laughs) how about yeah i'll share mine if you share yours yeah i was gonna say so we got two cowards and two brave men i'll I'll go (laughs) I, mine's very emo. It's a uh, a grad student in a cage. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I, I like it. That's kind of how I feel, but it's also like it's pretty emo. But uh, uh, the game was just... yeah. So like I said, it's like the the inside of the jacket, uh, mm-hmm. and it says a guy completely <laughs> changes up his life and tries to stay sane and happy. Lol. 
<laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's like yeah, the first sentence of like the plot. Summary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, that is our part one of our year compass episode. Looking back on 2022 overall, was it a good year or a bad year for you guys? What do you think? The line was very good. I, I wrote in my farewell all briefly, but like I was thankful for this year. Um, I overall net positive year. I did see a lot online of people saying how awful it was. And yeah, there were awful things for sure, but. In my personal yeah. life. <laughs> I feel like mine was uh, overall, I'd say net positive, but I think the the highs were very high this year, but the lows were also like very low um, on both ends of the spectrum, which is weird. But overall, yeah. um, I think there was more peaks than valleys. So, yeah. I'd say for me, it was probably one of my harder years, uh, not, not in my top 10, um, but I think that I realized some things and learned some things that will be helpful in the future. Uh, just this year itself was, was kind of rough, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about 2023 uh, next time, but um, until then, thanks everyone for, for listening. We'll be posting on Mondays on all the podcast services and YouTube. You can follow us on social media links in the description below. Make sure you follow us on Twitch, uh, EDF underscore podcast to watch our episodes. We recorded live on Thursday nights, as well as when we do some gaming, um, but yeah, I think that's all the room roll. Until next time, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.